to just tell you a little bit about myself, I am from a super small town in northern Minnesota. I taught myself how to code, freelance, did a lot of development, kind of started digging in, started in Joomla, moved into WordPress, did a little Drupal, um, kind of just, you know, dug in and figured things out. I decided that moving to the Twin Cities was going to really help me uh, expand upon my career and be able to uh, learn new things that I didn't know I should know, as well as meet a lot of awesome people. So when I moved there, first thing I did was find Meetup, uh, join as many Meetup groups as I possibly could of the things that I enjoy doing, uh, and actually got involved with the lovely ladies at Girl Develop It. How many of you are familiar with Girl Develop It? Awesome. Well, you all should be because it's amazing. So Girl Develop It is a nationwide organization that teaches women to code. It's actually not like little girls, it's women. Uh, and they, offer, they do that by offering workshops uh, at meetup groups all over the place. So they needed TAs for an HTML, an intro to HTML and CSS class. And I was like, yes, I'm there. I will totally TA for you. And they're like, awesome, we'd love to have you. So I went in, I TA'd, uh, basically a TA meant that I was helping students that were in the audience while the teacher was instructing that just couldn't get past something that they were stuck on uh, to make sure that they could move forward with the rest of the instruction. So I'd go help them, you know, work through things. Uh, at the end of the class, one of the chapter leaders came up to me and she's like, would you be interested in teaching a class? And I was like, well, maybe, like, I, I've never done that before. What, what does that entail? And she's like, we'd like to offer a second class that is a follow-up to this class, more of an intermediate HTML and CSS, uh, but we don't have a curriculum for it. So we would need you to build a curriculum as well as teach the class. Uh, and I had a lot of fun that day. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about uh, teaching people. I just, I really enjoyed what I was doing. So I decided that this is something I wanted to do. So I said, yes, and like, I would love to. Uh, so I ended up building a curriculum for the next class, as well as another follow-up class, as well as many other classes, uh, and got pretty deep into Girl Develop It because I enjoyed teaching people so much. So a little bit about me. I'm a developer advocate at Pantheon. Uh, I'm also an instructor for Girl Develop It Minneapolis, which I think is pretty obvious at this point. Uh, I founded an organization called Outspoken Women. Uh, it's an organization to support more women in technical speaking. I am in love, actually more so obsessed, with dogs, every single dog. So if you want to talk about dogs, that's, that's your end to have a conversation with me. Uh, I shoot archery and I'm really passionate about teaching others. So this is just a quick slide uh, with some of my contact information. These slides have already been tweeted out from my Twitter account, thanks to Buffer. Uh, so if you want to download the slides, you can go ahead and do so by following me on Twitter. Uh, and then also, please share any commentary, any ideas, anything you really liked, anything you didn't like um, on Twitter and use the official TC Drupal hashtag. So this talk is also going to get pretty interactive. So if you have a device in front of you, it could be a computer, it could be a phone, uh, we're going to navigate over to sli.do. Uh, so it's, uh, it's Slido or sl Slido, I don't, however they call it. And once you do that, you're going to enter in TC Drupal. So I'll just give you all a minute to do that before I move on. So what Slido is going to do is I'm going to ask you a couple of questions because I want to get to know you. Um, but there's also going to be an opportunity for you to ask me questions in there. So you can go into the questions area and post a question in there. And at the end, hopefully we have some time, uh, we'll run through some quick Q&A. So I'll be able to go through those questions. All right, so we're going to dig into some information about developer jobs uh, and the outlook on those. Does anyone have any idea what age most developers retire at? You can just yell out a number. 55. <laughs> you were at my lunch table. <laughs> uh, most developers retire at 55 years old, which makes us much different from other industries. Other industries have a lot longer uh, lifespan, uh, which means that we're going to lose developers sooner than other industries will. That's a problem because our outlook uh, is going to increase. We need a lot more developers in our field. Uh, in 2016, there was 162,000 total jobs that had developer or programmer or something with engineering uh, pertaining to software in them. In 2026, there's going to be 188,000 of those jobs. 
uh, but 10% of our developers are going to retire over those 10 years. So that means that not only are we losing a bunch of really experienced, awesome developers, um, but we're probably only bringing in half of that in terms of new developers. So we really need to work to train new developers or encourage more people to get into coding. So taking that a little bit further, I decided to dig into web developer jobs uh, and what those looked like. 60% of those jobs required two plus years of experience. I don't know about you all, but if I'm a junior web developer, I likely don't have a lot of experience. Maybe I have six months, maybe I have none. Maybe I went to school for computer science, I did a boot camp. Um, it's gonna be hard to apply for jobs when you don't have two years of experience. And not only that, I think we all know, even, and if you're not a developer, uh, two years is a huge amount of time. Things change. There's things that are way different in these two years that, were, that people were using two years ago. 18% uh, of them required one year of experience. Only 22% required no experience at all. That was a little traumatizing to me because how are these junior developers that don't have experience getting experience to get these jobs? So to just look quickly at this job description, uh, this job description is walking through uh, the various pieces of information that they want from someone. Uh, what I wanted to point out was the desired experience. They want someone to be f familiar with UX and design. They also want you to know version control and agile software development. They want you to know about WordPress. They want you to know about JavaScript frameworks. I think we all know that JavaScript frameworks all in itself is a huge ask to have somebody come in for a junior dev. This is sad. We need to change this. So how in the world are they getting this experience? They're not. So we need to be the change that we wish to see in the world. So as I walk through this, uh, I'm gonna break it into two parts. One's gonna be for organizations, so you as a manager or a team lead or someone who can influence an organization. And then also the next piece of it will be you as an actual developer or you as someone who can be a mentor. So in an organization, why you should hire junior developers. Team morale. Mentoring is rewarding and it's good for team morale. Who has ever taught someone something and just felt like amazing afterwards? Yeah, it's awesome, it feels good. Finding good people is hard. It's easier to find people that you culturally like for your team than it is to find someone who has that culture and that personality you're looking for with the skills that you need. So find the person that you like and give them the skills that you need. Passion is infectious. This really plays into the team morale, but junior developers are ambitious and they're excited and they wanna learn and they're super appreciative of the opportunity. They're gonna come in and they're gonna be passionate and the rest of your team is gonna be ignited by their passion. New ideas and thinking. They are going to bring in new ideas. They're going to bring in different outlooks because they are not in the industry or at least not in the industry as long as you've been. Uh, and they're also not on your team. So they have seen different ways to do different things uh, and they're gonna bring in those new ideas and thinking. So we figured out why we should do it. Let's talk about how we should get started. Write better job descriptions. Don't put that you want two years of experience if you're willing to take someone out of college. Instead, focus on the things that are more important. A passion to learn, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for, uh, maybe, you know, drive to succeed, whatever those personality traits might be, showcase those in your job description instead of the years of experience that you're requiring. Create strategic partnerships. So partner your experienced developers with your new developers on terms of things that they both enjoy. If you have a new developer and an experienced developer that both love dogs, you should put them together because then they're gonna talk about dogs and they're gonna create a relationship. They're gonna bond immediately over something that they both enjoy and that will start to create a friendship and make it a lot easier to have that mentor and mentee relationship. But don't require involvement. There are going to be people on your team that are not going to want to be involved. There might be someone that just doesn't feel, um, they don't feel like they have things to share, they're just not comfortable doing it, maybe they don't enjoy people, whatever it is that their situation might be, make sure that you confirm with your team that they are willing to be mentors before you assign them to a mentee. So I always get pushed back on this one and I understand that there are situations where this is okay, uh, but in general, managers are not mentors. 
managers are someone that you go to uh, when you need things like, when do I have time off? How can I expand my career path? Uh, a mentee might not ask a manager something like, hey, what is that CSS property for displaying or hiding something? Because they're gonna think that their manager thinks that they should know that. And then they're gonna be showing weakness that they don't know something. There are obviously super awesome managers out there that are different. Mine personally is amazing, and he would not ever make me feel like that. But everyone doesn't have that situation with their manager, so try not to partner managers with mentees. Uh, open lines of communication. Ensure there are methods in which they can openly communicate with you and your mentor. So find something that works for, the, for both parties. Maybe it's an open Slack channel. Maybe it's a email group. Maybe it's a once a week you set aside an hour of time and that's when you ask questions. Uh, create an opportunity for them to go about asking those questions. Track progress and make goals. If you're going to build these relationships, make sure that they know what they want out of the relationship. What do they want to learn? What does the experienced developer want to teach them? Where is the end goal for their career path while they're still in this junior developer phase? And lastly, build a program. The new developers that you just trained, maybe they go through a year-long junior developer role and you decide that after one year they're going to move into just a developer role. Turn that person into a mentor. They've freshly been through it. They know exactly what the pain points are. They are going to be able to relate to the new developers. All right, so that's why businesses should do it. So we're gonna dig into why developers or maybe why you specifically as an individual should get into it. All right, so why should you should become a mentor? Grow your network. Once I joined Girl Develop It, I actually grew my network greatly. I met tons of people in the Minneapolis, in the Minneapolis tech industry. Um, so much so that I actually got my previous job because of those connections. Uh, and so any time that you're looking to do anything, whether you're really happy in your job or you just want to get to know people, uh, it's going to help you grow your network. It feels good. Uh, I like to call this selfish acts of selflessness. Follow along with that. It feels really good to give back, but it also is selfless that you're spending this time helping somebody else. It helps you step outside of your comfort zone. Maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you don't enjoy getting out or maybe you're uncomfortable finding ways to get out and talk to people. Uh, there are lots of meetups or other local tech events that you can go out and they all feel the same way too and get to know them and then find someone that you want to mentor. Uh, and there's usually like the beer at those. Master your own skills. The first time that I taught the intermediate intro to or the intermediate HTML and CSS class, uh, I actually had someone and I was like, yeah, there's like 16 different like CSS colors. And one of my students was like, actually there's like, I don't know if it's 144 or 148. And I was like, what, really? And she showed me, CSS3 came out with like a whole bunch of new colors. I didn't know, I just usually use hexadecimal colors. Uh, and so when you're doing this, when you're teaching someone, it makes you better at what you're doing because you're getting into learning all the nitty gritty details about it. How do I teach this better? Um, how can I relay this information to them? So you can master your own skills. Their successes feel like your successes. I have three to four people that I could name off right now that went through all of my girl development classes that are now in engineering roles. One of them is a React developer as an intern who is taking a full-time job. One of them started their own agency in like super far northern Minnesota. Um, one of them quit a biology career to get into engineering. Uh, and it feels so good when they are successful, I feel like I contributed to that success. And you make new lifelong friends. I know where all of these people are at this point because we've became friends. They value my passion to teach them and I value them as a student because they've gotten, to, they've dug in, they want to learn, uh, and they appreciate the things that I was providing. All right, so where do you find these people? Where do you find the junior developers that you want to uh, help mentor? Colleges or schools, uh, universities, technical colleges. Also, don't rule out high schools or any other type of younger schools. Uh, there are a lot of kids that are not envisioning engineering or development or programming. Uh, as their future, but we can change that. We can get them to enjoy this and show them how cool it is to write code. Uh, code schools or boot camps. This one's huge. This is actually probably where I find most of my relationships now outside of Girl Develop It. 
Uh, we have a local code school, code school here called Prime Academy. Has anyone heard of it? Yeah, so I actually mentor for them quite frequently, uh, and they always have, each time they have a new cycle of students, they always have a call for mentors. Uh, and they'll send you an email, and if you're not available, you don't have to respond, but if you are, then you can go ahead and dedicate to that cycle of students and, and mentor them. Uh, local organizations or groups. So we talked about Meetup, that's how I found Girl Develop It. Meetup.com also has tons of other ones. I know there's a Drupal uh, user group, there's a WordPress user group, there's tons of other user groups out there where you can likely find people who are looking uh, for mentorship. Hackathons. Not only are hackathons really fun and exciting and also exhausting, uh, but it's also a really great way to meet junior developers. A lot of times, if they're coming from a code school or from a really uh, focus-driven uh, curriculum, they will actually encourage them to do these types of things. So the Nerdery did one every year. I'm not, I don't think they actually are doing, are doing it this year. Um, but 48 and 48, they do one. There's quite a few nonprofit hackathons that happen in the Twin Cities. Uh, and you will definitely meet new developers there. And conferences. We're all here. We're all in a room. Uh, there's a likely chance that there are people at this camp right now that are seeking mentorship. All right, we're running like super short on time, so I'm going to speak as fast as I can. <laughs> Uh, so tips for being a good mentor. Boost their confidence. Uh, the biggest thing is making them feel like they can do it. Nobody likes to feel like they can't do something. And I know if, if whoever is a developer here, I know you can relate. There are tons of times when I feel like I can't do things. The imposter syndrome is real and it is a problem and it is our job as mentors to help them overcome that and show them that they have the, the skills and the ability to overcome that. Guide their career path without telling them what to do. Ask them open-ended questions that will help you guide the things that they want to do. Uh, do you want to work at a really fast-paced agency? Do you like a lot of fast-paced work? Or do you like to take your time and really learn things and be able to, to dedicate a lot of time to that? I've asked that question a lot and we've been able to veer from they want agency work or maybe they want to work in a corporation. Um, or maybe they're like, how do you feel about open source? Or do you want to you know, work in a different area? Uh, and a lot of those questions can help them pinpoint which route they want to take. Be available when you say you're going to be available. You don't have to be available all the time. Obviously, we all have our own lives. We have our own families, our own things that we have going on. But be available when you say that you're going to so that they can count on you and reach out during those times. Share resources with them. They don't know what they don't know. So if they don't know that React might be the cool JavaScript thing they need to learn, we need to tell them that. Um, or maybe they don't know that Drupal is as cool as it is. So we need to tell them that. Uh, tell them things that you know about. Share blog posts, share books, share you know, articles. Maybe it's people they should follow on Twitter. Uh, share as much as you can in terms of the things that they want to learn. Working coding examples. Give them actual coding examples that are working so that they can take them and tweak them uh, and learn from those coding examples. Live coding sessions, this one's really great. Sit with them, do like a screen sharing and allow them to code with you. As they start to do stuff, don't tell them they're doing something wrong, but ask them why they took that approach and maybe talk through other ways that they could have gone that path. Code reviews, uh, again, I suggest you never tell them they did something wrong. But when you're doing a code review, you can look through their code and say, hey, I really like what you did here, but did you think about doing this because this might have been less code or more efficient or taken less time. Uh, and if you really want to spread uh, and be able to mentor multiple people, lead a study group. That will allow the powers and numbers. So you'll be able to have multiple people in one room and help them all at one time. All right, so help others achieve their dreams and you will achieve yours. I think this is really true. For me, I didn't even know that teaching was something I enjoyed doing so much. Uh, so much so that my career now includes teaching. And I had no idea until I actually did it. Uh, so help others achieve their dreams and eventually you'll find the thing that really ignites you. All right, so we're going to get back to uh, the Slido. So I had you all uh, log in. So what we're going to do is I'm going to escape my screen here. And I forgot to log in before I started, so apologies. So if you haven't, you just go to sli.do and then you put in TC Drupal for the event. All right. So we started the first question. Uh, so feel free to answer these as they're popping up. So there should be questions on your, you guys can't see this. 
dang it. Um, no, it's not working. This, it's not recognizing that I have a, a screen. Oh, good. This is less cool. Okay, but on my end, I can see that 80% of people need a mentor, and I can see that 80% of people want a mentor. 20% uh, of people are already a mentor. Uh, so what I'm gonna make you do right now is if you said that you need a mentor, can you please stand up? I know this is kind of stressful and... <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Okay, don't sit down, stay standing up. Okay, if you said that you want to be a mentor, please stand, or that you want to be a mentor, yes, please stand up. Okay, so you, all of you that are standing up, need to look at all of the other people that were already standing up. So Joe and Michelle, or <laughs> Michelle, sorry. Um, I'm thrown off now. Anyways, um, look at each other. And now these are the people that you can help mentor. So find each other after camp, talk about it. There's likely other people at camp that also want to mentor people. Uh, and just meet with them, make it happen. You guys can sit down now. Sorry for putting you on the spot, but it works good. All right, so the last question I have here um, is where have you successfully partnered with a mentor or mentee if you've already done that? I know not many of you said that you're already a mentor, but if you have, um, where was that relationship built or how was that successful? I've already given a lot of good ideas for myself. So far, no one is answering. <laughs> um, but for me, it was all of the things that I already said in my slides. Uh, sometimes it's work. That's a, a really common uh, answer as well. It might be someone that is in a different team at work um, or maybe someone who is in a role that you aspire to be in. Maybe you're not a developer, but you want to be a developer. Um, yeah, DrupalCon, that's also a really good one. Uh, the sprints, workshops, coding boot camp. Sorry, you guys can't see this. It's showing up as a nice little cloud here. <coughs> Uh, friends, yeah, friends might totally, you have no idea what, I mean, some of my friends, I don't know what they do. Uh, maybe some of them are in an industry that I want to learn about. All right, so I'm going to open my slides here. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, if you want to use the app, that's great too. Um, otherwise, I encourage you to reach out. If you want to get into mentorship, you want to find a mentor, I am more than willing to help create those connections, find you someone. Um, that can help you do that. I've got a lot of local connections. If you're out of town, I can still help you because there's tons of people that I know through the community. Um, so reach out, follow me on Twitter, shoot me an email. Uh, there's also a link up there to rate the talk. Um, so if you, if you feel compelled to do so, add some feedback. Uh, the slides are out on Twitter if you want to download them. No questions? I have a question. Yeah. So here's my deal. I'm an extrovert. However, many, many, many of the people here at this camp are introverts. <laughs> it's very so true. how in the heck do you battle that? If you're an extrovert, I encourage you to reach out to them because it's going to be harder for them to reach out to you first because they're introverted and they don't, and it's not that introverts don't like to talk to people, it's that they're not fueled by other people around them. Uh, they're exhausted by other people around them instead of being fueled by them. Uh, so it might be on you to actually be that person that reaches out to them. In terms of this kind of relationship, it's going to be hard to just be like, hey, do you need a mentor? Do you need a mentor? Um, that, that's a little bit different. Uh, so maybe you could do, I know they have, is it Birds of a Feather that they're doing? The different BOF sessions? Yeah. If you, maybe if you really want a mentor or you want a mentee, um, create a BOF session and allow people to come and say, hey, um, here's a mentor, here's a mentee, and connect that. Uh, find a way to create a connection. So maybe it's you post on Twitter, use the official hashtag, hey, at 2 p.m., I, I want to chat with people who are looking into getting into mentorship or who need a mentor. Uh, find ways to reach out to the people that are there, uh, whether that be just talking to them or creating some of those other opportunities. It's a good question. All right, we have like 50 seconds left. I think we're good. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>